It's Monday, September 23rd, 2013, and let's talk about what happened this weekend over at xdadevelopers.com. First up, the Moto X released not too long ago, and of course, before that, Android 4.3 became available. So, lots and lots of people were not terribly... They didn't really understand why Google chose to release this, or why Motorola, as a part of Google, chose to release the Moto X without Android 4.3 on it. Well, apparently that problem is going to be rectified before too long. Of course, probably right around the time that Android 4.4 officially kind of releases, but whatever. But why do I say this? XDA4 member The Orange Remix found a copy of Android 4.3, at least a leaked copy, for the T-Mobile Moto X. This is an early engineering build. It's not anything final. It's bug-ridden. It's slower than Android 4.2.2. But XDA senior member Jimmy DeFish went ahead and packaged it up as a fast boot image that you can flash onto your device. So if you're a user of the T-Mobile Moto X and this is something that you're interested in, you may want to take a look at it. I would definitely say read through the forum thread first, just because people, like I said, are saying it's significantly slower, but there are also supposedly some camera tweaks to it that make it a little bit more useful, a little more usable, some extra features maybe. So as always, head on over to that forum thread, get all the details and all the information. I'll have a link to the portal post down in the video description so you can check that out for yourself. Moving right along, one of the features of the Moto X that is just awesome, in my opinion, is the active display, the active notifications, whatever you want to call it. So, of course, everybody and their mother is making their own implementation of it, but XDA senior member 0xD34D, or Oxdead, or whoever he wants to be, has taken it one step farther in that he created his own implementation and included it in his own OS, Chameleon OS, which is a ROM, uh, and he made it open source. Now this gives you a lot of the same features you get out of other active display and active notifications type things, like instantly turning the screen on whenever there's a notification, giving you the ability to have up to eight notifications displayed horizontally on that screen. You can show the description when you go over it. You can have it automatically pop back up after a certain amount of time if you haven't already checked it. You can have it pop up again and breathe, uh, breathe that screen back on whenever you pull it out of a pocket or a bag. Lots of great features that really do mimic what you get on the Moto X or the Droid Max or whatever else is using this active display technology. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about how it works, you can always check it out. There's open source implementation of it now for Chameleon OS. You can read through the forum thread, of course, as I always do recommend. And if it is something that you like and you want to put it on your ROM of choice instead of running Chameleon OS, you can always do that. Like I said, it is open source, so that is awesome. And keeping things rolling, as we've talked about before, there is a way to enable multi-boot on certain devices, but it's not always necessarily the easiest thing to do. A lot of times the documentation's a little bit lacking, or the process is just a little bit more involved than most people want to get into. Well, XDA recognized developer Monjini has created an app called Multi-Boot Manager that aims to make this a little bit easier, specifically for the Sony Xperia U, Sola, and Go. And then on top of that, XDA senior member Noob Coder went ahead to create a thread describing how to get this done, so making it just a little easier on top of the easier app itself. And that guide is made available through the new Sony cross-device development forum, so if you want to go ahead and check that out, like I said, it works on multiple devices and we do specifically know which ones it works on. So if you have one of those devices and you want to learn a little bit more about multi-booting between different ROMs on top of it, head on over to that cross-device development forum, get all the details there. And speaking of Sony devices and heading back to a previous video, as we talked about before with the Sony Xperia Z1, when you unlock it, you lose the ability to do a lot of stuff in the camera, and actually I think the entire camera itself stops working. Well, XDA recognized developer CrabApple2548 has worked a way around that by porting the Z1 camera over to some other devices, specifically the Xperia Z, ZL, Z Ultra, and ZR. Yes, they're only Sony devices, but those are the ones that are going to have that required DRM that you're going to need. At least I'm making the presumption there because yeah. And it's supposed to give you some really cool features on top of a normal camera, like an augmented reality type effect, and a time shift mode, which is very cool, manual mode, which most cameras don't have for some reason, and uh, automatic mode, social cast mode, all sorts of different modes that Sony has put together for this. Realistically, if you have one of those devices I mentioned and this sounds interesting to you, go ahead and give it a shot. Worst case scenario, it isn't useful and you get rid of it, or I guess the worst case would be it sets your house on fire and kills your parents or something, but I don't think that's going to happen. Check the forum thread for all the details, I'm going to say it every single time. And speaking of cameras, not too long ago we talked about the new application Focal being brought into CyanogenMod. Well, there's been a bit of drama, a bit of back and forth, and now the app has been pulled out of CyanogenMod, and XDA Elite recognized developer Explode Wild has made it open source, and he has put it out in the Google Play Store. So, kind of the way that Google's doing things in that you can pull that application down to your device of your choosing, 
without having to have it as a part of any sort of ROM. So in most ways, that's kind of a cool thing. As to the reasons why it was pulled out of CyanogenMod, not really my place to go into that, but it was some drama regarding relicensing. Explode Wild, Guillaume, the developer of it, he's got some information over on his Google+, Plus. you can check it out from there. But I will put a link to the portal post, which links over to the forum thread, and I'm sure you can find his Google+, Plus information from there if you want to know a little bit more about the goings on there. Biggest thing to take out of this is that Focal is now out of CM and in the Google Play Store, so you can get it on your device pretty much no matter what. Although, from reading through the thread, it doesn't work on every single device yet, so there may be some early beta type stuff to it. And to sort of wrap things up, two other videos were posted to XDA Developer TV this weekend by Jace. The first one was Jace's take on the current state of open source, and the second one, he was talking about the developer state of flow and how you can kind of get into a zen-like mind state when you're developing and go to a new plane of existence and things like that. Very cool. But anyway, that's gonna be about all from me for today. As always, if you like this video, make sure to hit that like button down below the video. Subscribe to receive our content as soon as it becomes available. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again on Friday.